English is a language that is pretty much everywhere. However, solely operating in English can hold back companies and businesses. Most people simply prefer their native language. This is why we need translation. It allows people to communicate more effectively. Translation builds bridges between cultures. I am Nabil Murad. In this tutorial, I show you how to translate text or functions to any language in Excel using three different methods depending upon the work situation. So let's dive in. Here is my start file. You can download the exercise file and read the step-by-step -step instructions by clicking on the link below this video. In this worksheet, I have in column A a list of words in English that I want to translate to other languages. I start by selecting the list of words from cell A2 to cell A12 and I use the simple tool available on the Review tab. You can click on the Review tab and then click on Translate. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut Alt-Shift-F7. When you click on Translate, it opens the Translator pane on the right-hand side. In this pane, you see two boxes. In the upper box, I see the text I selected in column A. In the lower box, I see the corresponding translation in Hindi. That was my selection the last time I used the tool. It remembers my selection. I want to change the language to French. Then I click on the little down pointing arrow in the target language. And from the list, I select French. Automatically, I get the list of words translated in French. Now I want to copy these words and put them in the corresponding cells in column B. I select all the words and then I hit Ctrl C to copy. And the biggest challenge is to paste them in the corresponding cells. The reason I'm saying it's a challenge, because if you select any cell, I'm selecting cell B2, and I paste by using the shortcut Ctrl V, all the text appears in one single cell. I want my text to appear in a column, each word in a different cell. Then I'm going to undo this, Instead of just selecting the cell, double click on the cell and you will be putting Excel in the enter mode. You can read the word enter in the lower left corner of your screen. Now I can paste Ctrl V, but before hitting enter, I want to select all the pasted text one more time. So I hit Ctrl A to select all, Ctrl X to cut it, and then the trick is to click outside to deselect the cell, click on B2 one more time and paste. And here you go. Each word appears in a corresponding cell. Let's repeat one more time with a different language. I select the text in column A and then I change the language from the drop list. This time I'll be selecting Hindi. I get the translated text. I select it. And then I copy it, Control C. I go to the destination cell, cell C2. I double click to put it in the enter mode. I paste Control V. I select all Control A. I cut it, Control X. Deselect the cell and reselect the same cell, cell C2, one more time. And this time I paste. Let's repeat for the Portuguese, Arabic, and Chinese. And I was able to translate my text to any language I select using the Translate tool on the Review tab. Let's close this pane, the Translator pane. So long as we are using Excel, then we definitely create formulas and functions. Translating formulas and functions to any language can be very useful. For someone like me delivering corporate training to people from different countries, this functionality is really useful. To translate formulas and functions, we need to add a Microsoft add-in called Function Translator. And to do that, I go to the Insert tab of the ribbon 
and on the Insert tab, I click on Get Add-ins. The Office Add-ins dialog box opens. Make sure the Store tab is selected and click on Productivity. You see a list of popular add-ins. Scroll down until you see the Functions Translator. Click on Add. You have to accept the license terms, so click on Continue. The tool is automatically added to the right side of the Home tab. You can see two options, Reference and Translator. Clicking on any of them will open a pane on the right side of your window. I start by clicking on Reference. Click on Allow and Continue. And here is the Reference tab. I see a drop list for the different function categories. Financial is selected by default and I'll keep it that way. I have a list of financial functions in English and the corresponding functions in German. You can change the language by clicking on the gear icon in the lower right corner. So if you wish, you can select a different language. I'll keep German for now and I want to go back to the references tab. Then I click on go back, the left pointing arrow. I'm looking for the payment function and because it's alphabetic, then I want to see the equivalent of the payment function in German. And here is the equivalent. When I clicked on it, it took me to the dictionary tab. And in the dictionary tab, I can see a description for that function. Most of the time, you will be using the translator tab directly. So when I click on translator, this is a box where I can type my formula or function in English. I can also select a cell having the formula and function from the worksheet. Then I'm going to select cell B5 where I have a payment function and I copy it from the formula bar, Control C. The only thing you cannot do is to start creating the function because there is no IntelliSense list and you cannot click on a cell in the worksheet while you are typing the function in this box. Then I'm going to paste my payment function, Control V. And I want to see the equivalent of this function in a different language. Right now I have German set. Then I click on this down pointing arrow and automatically I get the equivalent of the payment function in German. Should you wish, you can put this function in a selected cell by clicking on this little icon to replace the existing function. But this is an undoable action. If you do it by mistake, then keep the same cell selected and click on the same button but in the original language to replace it with the original function. We have some controls because not all the language have the same delimiter, so you can use a different delimiter. At any time, you can change the target language by clicking on the gear icon in the lower right corner. What if I try to translate a different function so let's select the function in cell B9. It's a left function with a nested find function. I copy it from the formula bar and then I go to the top box in the function translator. I delete and I paste the new function. I want to see the translation. I click on the down pointing arrow and it's working fine. Does it work the same way with the new dynamic array functions? In cell C9, I have a text after function, which is a relatively recent function. I select it from the formula bar, Control C. I delete what I have in the top box and I paste Control V. I want the equivalent translation. I click on the down pointing arrow and it looks like it has the same name in German. What about more complicated functions with multiple levels of nesting? In cell F19, I have a VLOOKUP function with a nested CHOOSE function. So I'm going to select it, Control C. I delete what I have in the top box. I paste Control V. I click on the down pointing arrow and the translation is working just fine. Let's close the function translator pane. If you have a large amount of text, then in this case, we need the help of a colleague. We need the help of Google Translate, and that requires using Power Query. I learned the basic concept of this technique by reading a blog 
on the Mr. Excel message board, link to the original post is in the description below this video. But I took the concept and I modified it and I tried to make it more dynamic so I can select the destination language from a drop list. Let me show it to you in action. On the Power Query worksheet, I have a list of sentences in column A and I selected Chinese because I want to translate from English to Chinese. And just by selecting the language, I get the translated text. Let's try to change the language. This time I'll be selecting French. When I change my selection from Chinese to French, then the table returned from Power Query updates and I get the corresponding translation in French. The basic concept is, I have a table in Excel that I load to Power Query, and Power Query connects to Google Translate using an M function, web.contents. That's an application programming interface, API, that allows me to communicate with Google Translate. In Google Translate, the text in English is translated to the language I select, and it returns a JSON file a JavaScript object notation file. Back to Power Query, another M function, JSON.document, is an M function responsible for parsing the JSON content as a list in Power Query. With some transformation, I make it look the way you see it on screen and I send it back to Excel. If you want to learn how I did that, you can read the step by step instructions and even copy the M code by reading my blog. Link is in the description below this video. Let's try another language. I selected Hindi and I get the translation in Hindi. Let me know in a comment how accurate this translation is because actually I'm not familiar with all these languages. And if you enjoyed this training video, Give it a thumbs up, share it with friends, write a comment, and more importantly, make sure to subscribe to my channel to be notified when new tutorials are released. Let's repeat it in French. Here is the French translation in column F of what I just said. Let's repeat it in German. And here it is in German. Let's repeat it in Hindi. Let's repeat it in Portuguese. And finally, let's repeat it in Arabic. Remember, the best is yet to come. Al Aftal Lam Yatiba. Thanks for watching and see you next time.